I'm Ben, as it's mentioned, and I'm really happy that I'm here to present uh, our research for you. Uh, our research, as you can see, is about identifying and improving data set references uh, in social science full text. As a first slide, you can see the outline of uh, my presentation. Uh, so we skip it. Uh, so why we choose this problem to solve? Actually, till now, a lot of uh, paper have been published. And I can say that most of them uh, have been uh, missed uh, ex uh, and uh, or what they call it explicit links to their underlying uh, data sets. Maybe you are asking me why an explicit links to this data set are important. I give you two examples. Uh, imagine a reviewer who want to review. Uh, an evaluation on a paper which is based on a data set. And in a second uh, case, we have a reader who want to apply further analysis on a data set. So uh, explicit link to a data set can facilitate these purposes. So if we want to solve this problem manually, it will be time consuming and means that a person should uh, go through all of this paper one by one and detect these uh, references and then finding the corresponding data set and fix this problem, which uh, seems a little bit impossible uh, and even in some cases uh, need uh, an expert uh, of the domain of the paper to detecting such a data set. I think it is a good idea that I give a definition for a data set. Uh, there is, uh, there is a different definition for this term, but I prefer to use the Reniel et al. Uh, definition. They said that a data set is a collection of data which are related to each other and they are collected by sort of uh, activities such as measuring or observing. And most of the time, uh, they are collected uh, for a scientific uh, purpose. If I want to uh, clarify what is the problem, very simply, uh, I can say that imagine we have a paper, and this, in this paper we have a, a reference. As you can see here, we have Albus 2010. As a first task, we should detect this reference. And as you can see again, there is no an explicit link to this data set. An explicit link can be a DOI, uh, as you can see there. Uh, so for solving and finding this DOI, we can go through a data set registry and find a corresponding item for this reference, and then extracting metadata such as a DOI uh, from this data registry for that uh, special item, and then using this DOI in that paper. This problem can be even more hard and complicated because uh, a data set reference can be appear all over the paper. For example, footnote, title, caption of picture, uh, and uh, you can see this uh, information in the pie chart. Uh, pie chart. Uh, and uh, in this table, you can see that we have a very a uh, huge variety of uh, citation style. For it, it is differ from uh, an author to the other author and from a paper to another paper. When we merge these two facts, we will understand that if we want to use a training set for sol uh, solving this problem, this training set will be very huge uh, and sometimes it is impossible to reach such a uh, big training set, which can cover all possibilities. Okay. So uh, we find out that a few uh, work has been done about this special uh, topic, but for its foundation, uh, which I can say. Uh, 
for example, a string similarity or keyword or uh, metadata extraction, a lot of work uh, have been done. Uh, I have tried to categorize them in three main categories. Uh, first of first of uh, first of these categories is a method which work uh, based on bag of word uh, methodology, and uh, I give some example for each category as well. Uh, for example, in this category, uh, we find a approach which extract metadata from uh, papers uh, by using TFIDF or we find a lot of a, a string similarity metrics such as geocar dice to or cosine similarity which use this uh, bag of word methodology the second one is um, approaches which use a corpus or a web and uh, for, for, for extracting metadata or extracting uh, data set from a uh, full text I can mention about uh, Sigal et al. Uh, paper, which they focus on extracting data set, and they try to uh, use some heuristic for extracting data set references from papers, and then applying NGD uh, on these terms uh, to find out which of them are data set and which of them are not. Um, by the way, NGD is uh, an algorithm uh, which help us to estimate the probability of existence of two terms separately in a document as well as their co-occurrence. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, we know that uh, Shifa et al. Uh, introduced NRD, which is an improvement and great uh, extent for NGD, and it can be an alternative uh, of NGD. Final category is machine learning approaches. We know that uh, there is a lot of approaches uh, for extracting uh, metadata and keyword from full text which use machine learning uh, such as SVM, CRF, and HMM. But one of uh, research that I really like to introduce it is for one of our colleagues, uh, Boland et al., uh, which they use a bootstrapping algorithm for extracting a uh, data set from papers. So we use two main uh, data sources in our approach. The first one is data for evaluating our approach, which is uh, MDA uh, journal papers. MDA is a journal which is related to scientific uh, social science uh, domain. And the second uh, source, uh, source of data that we have used uh, was metadata of the DARA repository, which we use them for identifying data set references in a uh, full text paper. DARA is a <coughs> registry for uh, economic and social science entity. And I can say that it contains different type of data, such as text, video, and data set. And it's only uh, I can say that, uh, for example, for the data set, it contains more than uh, 32,000 uh, yes, uh, data set inside. So uh, now I want to explain uh, how uh, we extract and we solve uh, this problem. We divide our uh, approach into four uh, steps. First step is, uh, we, uh, we actually, we, we implement an application for our, our approach, and a user uh, can ask this application to harvest all metadata which related to the data set, uh, and which are regis registered in a DARA, such as DOI and title. And then our approach extracts some special characteristic feature from these titles, 
such as abbreviation or special phrases. You can see some example about each of these uh, categories. Uh, we use more than eight rules for extracting abbreviation. And for generating this uh, rule, uh, first we go through some portion of uh, data set in the DARA and try to manually extract abbreviation uh, from these titles. And based on this list that's, uh, that we have generated, we try to make these rules. These rules can uh, actually, uh, this rule can add or remove some item from this uh, list. So uh, one rule as a simple example, I can say that when our approach face a term which are totally or fully in a capital letter and doesn't have any meaning, it consider it as an abbreviation. Or a term which partially in a, a capital letter, again, it consider it as an abbreviation. It was two very simple uh, rules that uh, we have used for generating abbreviation. And for a special phrases, uh, we define a list with uh, about 30 items, such as survey, pool, and a study. And then with very simple uh, rules, we try to extract uh, some uh, special phrases from this title. For example, when our approach face a pattern such as survey of, it will extract the third terms as well. This third term should not be a stop word, and the whole, whole of these three terms uh, make a, a special phrases for us. OK. Uh, second, second step. Uh, in the second step, our approach detecting these extracted special uh, features inside the paper. And whenever it finds some features inside the paper, uh, it assumes that it finds a reference. And then it compares the uh, titles, titles of the data set uh, that we extracted from Dara. Uh, we compare uh, our, uh, our approach compare these titles with each references. The references and the list of the titles should contain a common uh, a special uh, features. And we, uh, or actually I can say our approach uh, compare uh, and do this comparison by using uh, TF-IDF and cosine similarity. Uh, actually, we pick a cosine similarity because it has a good normalization, and we decide to merge it with TF-IDF, which is a good uh, weighting system. Uh, so TF-IDF vectorize references and titles, and with cosine similarity, we compare uh, titles and references which is, uh, with each other, and we we will rank them, and then we will we can use this ranked list. But uh, still, this ranked list is not quite satisfying because because of a problem that I can show you in this uh, in this picture. In second paper, uh, everything is fine. Our approach find a reference which is reference to a data set which is Albus 2014, and then uh, it's ranked uh, titles in a Dara, uh, and as you can see, uh, the corresponding and the correct uh, match receive a higher ranked among the other one, and. You, you can see that uh, Albus 2014 is selected as a correct match. But the problem is in the uh, paper one, in the first paper. As you can see, 2014 is repeated many times in this paper, and TF-IDF consider it as a, a stop word. But a term such as a study 
It's repeated rarely, so TF-IDF consider it as a keyword. So when we apply cosine similarity on titles, uh, it gives us wrong ranking. So we solve this problem with a very a small trick, and we use a algorithm simply, and uh, we say that, OK, if you face a year entity, give it a higher weight. And with this very simple trick, we solve this problem as well. The final step is showing the result to the user. So we imagine two workflow for our approach. One, uh, our approach will suggest some candidate, actually five candidate, uh, to the user per references. And actually, this workflow, which is first one, is our main focus here in this research. But we find it, for example, in our test corpus, uh, each paper on average has more than 45 refer references inside. So it can be quite tiring for a user go through uh, this can candidate and select among them. So we suggest a second one, which uh, suggests uh, some uh, candidate to the user per detected special features. OK, in this picture, you can see an uh, overview of the, uh, our approach. Uh, it cannot cover all details, but it can give you the main ideas, uh, idea of our system. A user uh, import a document in our system and then ask for the first time, uh, ask from the application of uh, our approach to extract the titles of data set from Dara and then extracting a special features from them. As you can see in this step, uh, it is labeled by M1, which means that a user can involve in this uh, step, which means that after, ex after generating these extracted special features, a user can review all these extracted features and decide that, okay, which one is uh, not extracted correctly or add more items to improve the accuracy of our approach. And then uh, our approach detects uh, these uh, features inside the paper. And then for each references that uh, it finds, uh, it compared the list of titles, which contain a com common uh, features inside uh, with that reference and then apply TF-IDF on them and rank them by cosine similarity and return this ranked list uh, to the user. Only five top items in the list because we find out that uh, the correct candidate is among uh, these top five items. So uh, for evaluating our uh, system, we pick randomly uh, 50 papers from MDA journal from 2013 and 2014 year, um, years. Um, and uh, six of these papers uh, were in, in English, and nine of them was in German, were in German. And then uh, one of our colleagues uh, tried to review all of this paper and find out uh, and detect uh, the data set references uh, in the paper and uh, form a list of data set uh, which is exist in each of these paper. And by this procedure, we make our gold standard as well. So here in, in, in this example, you can see that how, how we evaluate our uh, approach. Uh, so we have a paper. A, a, a person go through this paper and make a list of data set that he could find it in a, pa in a paper. We call it gold standard. And then we try to process 
that paper with our approach and in, in this case, for example, it faces a reference, as you can see in the above, in the uh, red box. And if this reference has a, a special uh, characteristic feature, which here is a PISA, and uh, this uh, characteristic feature existed in our gold standard, means the detection is uh, done correctly. And uh, then, as I mentioned, uh, our approach uh, suggests five, uh, five candidates to the user, as a, and a user can uh, select among uh, this list and find which title is a correct match for that data set. If one of these titles are exists in the gold standard, means that matching phase is uh, done correctly as well. So, uh, in, our uh, in our test corpus, uh, without considering a different version of data set, we, I can say that uh, we had tw 25 uh, different data sets. Uh, actually, why I say that without considering Different versions, for example, uh, Albus, which is a, a very popular data set in social science, has more than 140 versions itself. And you can uh, see some uh, statistics on fre frequency of data set and references in our uh, test corpus. And in uh, Below uh, table, you can see the r result of uh, our evaluation. Uh, we, doesn't we didn't consider a false positive uh, from detection phase into the matching phase, and we just ignored them. And as you can see, uh, we have same precision and recall because in matching phase when we have uh, when we own a false positive it means that at the same time we have a false negative so these two number are same and when we have two uh, we have same precision and recall we uh, gain same f measure as well so i can say that uh, our approach doesn't have any uh, cold start, and uh, in our uh, small uh, test corpus, it's gained very good uh, result for evaluation, and in the, uh, this uh, small test corpus has a good quality, and we didn't try to improve our approach on this, what they call it, a small, uh, test corpus, and you can, and you have seen the results, and uh, it's it's it works very fast. Actually, it can generate result for a paper which contain uh, 45 reference inside. It can generate result uh, about one minute. And one, one of the other benefit of our approach is that it retains a rank risk to the user. So a user can decide among them. So it means that we can reach better accuracy or something like that. And even we can use this feature for training the other approach as well. So it can be good uh, advantage of our approach. As a future work, uh, we want to uh, work on improving accuracy and uh, coverage of our approach. We can improve the accuracy of our approach by considering better uh, a string similarity, which they can uh, consider synonym inside. And for example, we can uh, use identifying central data set in paper as well. And for improving coverage, we can use uh, different uh, data set registry and not only DARA because uh, still some of data set are not uh, register in this uh, registry and with using different registry, we can extend our coverage. and. 
in our approach, which I presented for you, we only use title for uh, finding the correct match, but we know that the other metadata of data set can play uh, important roles, such as uh, year of these studies. So we can uh, consider them as well and extract more pattern. So with this stuff, we can uh, improve the coverage of our approach. And that was my presentation, and thank you. Great, thank you very much. Um, we do have a little bit of time. Any questions from the audience? It's, I guess, a little bit more technical than most of the other paper, but I was just curious. Um, about those F score, what does it mean when you have a score of 0.83? Does that mean uh, what, what's the scale of that? Like, what, what if measured, you mean? Yeah. Okay. What would be considered really Actually, acceptable? Uh, it is when we, when we have the precision uh, metric and recall metric. Maybe one of them is up and one of them is low. Uh, low. But if measure uh, will give us a balance metric that when uh, it, it is a what they call it unify precision and recall and it we can decide based on that f measure so if we cannot decide based on precision and recall we go to the f measure for making our decisions well for those of us who oh there's a question from the yeah I have two questions. Uh, one, I don't remind if you mentioned the question of the language. So, do you uh, is it only on one language uh, that you are working? Uh, can Can you speak a little bit louder? Sorry. Okay. Uh, so, uh, do you work only on one language uh, in the paper? Or is it available for every language? English, French, uh, okay, uh, German, okay, okay. and so on? Uh, Actually, because it is based on extracting abbre abbreviation, I can say that it works for every different language as well, because abbreviation is abbreviation, and it, it, it will not, uh, what they call it, change in different languages. And okay. then we, uh, when we find this reference, we just need to uh, compare the title with that reference. And most of the time, they are the same, and we can reach good uh, result for matching as well. By the way, if, if, for example, in a French version, the title is mentioned in in different way, uh, still we can detect it, but maybe we have some problem in matching. Okay, and my second question is about uh, the definition of social sciences. Mm -hmm. So, what is the perimeter of your corpus, and is it extendable even uh, probably towards humanities? Corpus? Actually, why, why, why I say that our approach working on social science, because we use two data source, as I mentioned uh, in uh, uh, in my slide, we use MDA journal, which focus on social science and uh, DARA, which is a re repository for social, uh, in social science uh, and economic entity. So because we use, for example, metadata which related to the social science, we say that it works for social science. But if we consider the other, for example, repository, data registry, which is related, for example, for uh, computer science field, it works on that field as well. But because we use limited data source, we call it that it works on social science domain. 